Minister, um, my name is Isabel Kirkbride. I've lived in Alice Springs for 10 years and I have three children. And I'm the founder and representative of families for the nuclear free future. Um, we're a community network which is strongly opposed to any exploration or mining in our town or central Australia, especially Angela Pamela. We are, we are 200 strong of members since last November, so it's only a few months ago, and we are actively encouraging citizens to have an informed voice about this issue. We're well informed about the uranium mining industry, the horrific health risks, the social impacts and environmental risks, and we are very aware of Cameco's disastrous track record. How do we as families against the nuclear industry stop uranium mining companies from coming into our town and threatening our families and children. That's my question to you today. Isabel, my name is Con, it's not Minister, so you can call me Con. Second is that, uh, I said to you before, and, and, and that's my commitment, we will not allow money that will have a detrimental effect on the environment or have a social impact on areas. Um, how are you going to stop, uh, well, you remember, you start, start the group, your community group, Vocal One, I will let you to continue your activities, oh, thank you. uh, certainly, uh, and I would like to remind you too that I'm here to listen to your opinion, and certainly I will be going out to listen to other people's opinion, uh, and uh, I want to be well informed before I form an opinion and put a recommendation to the Minister in the Federal Government. We're well informed on the facts, we've been doing a lot of research internationally on Cameco, and um, we won't tire of this because we don't want to leave town and we don't want to put our young children's lives at risk and we know the risks. So we need you to do whatever you can to stop this process now. Hi Con, my name's Alf Lang. I've lived in this town 21 years. I'm currently watching my great-grandchildren go to school. I wonder how many grandparents in Chernobyl are watching their children go to school, or Nagasaki, or Hiroshima, or anywhere else where uranium has touched human beings. It's a disaster, mate. It should stay in the bloody ground where it belongs. And those who, and those who advocate its use should join it. Now, in actual fact, with a lot of research that has been going on into geothermal, why don't these companies put their money into something that which will be of a benefit to humanity, rather than trying to kill them? Thousands of men gave their lives flying helicopters, dropping concrete onto Chernobyl to try and stop a complete meltdown and what is known as the China Syndrome. Those men gave their lives willingly. The bastards at the top who supplied the money and were getting all the money rip off and the profits from the Chernobyl powerhouse, were they there shoveling concrete? Not bloody likely. Now we don't want that sort of garbage here in Alice Springs. We do not want to have the world's uranium dump plastered here in the Northern Territory. Thank you, Con. Thank you, Arthur. And certainly we don't want a, a uranium dump or a nuclear dump in the Northern Territory. We argue for a long, long time against it. Uh, Minister, my name's Derek Shield. I'm the convener of the uh, Greens in the Northern Territory, Alice Springs resident for, uh, uh, must be about nine years now. Got a daughter living in town and a family and uh, extremely concerned about this project which is uh, well underway. Um, understand that you're here today also as the Health Minister, newly appointed. 
um, which is uh, something different to your resources role, but I'm sure you bear that in mind in everything that you uh, think about as regards uranium and how you'll uh, respond to questions today. I've got um, five Barakas here to help me today. I'll be fairly quick. I think I should be finished by the time we deal with one of them. Um, they represent all of the world's uranium. I'm going to lay them out on the table. And I'm going to drop one into this glass of water. One fifth of the world's uranium, which is pretty close to 17.5% of the world's uranium. Only 2.5% off. But that's how much uranium is underwater flooded and inaccessible in Cameco's Cigar Lake project in Canada. It's been like that for two and a half years and despite efforts last year in June getting approval to attempt to remove this vast quantity of water which was contaminating their uranium, they had to stop a few months later. They stopped just a day or so after the Territory election and we heard about it about three days after that. And that was about six weeks before the exploration licence application was granted. Chemico haven't been given approval to take the water out of the uranium and so they're still unable to access that very lucrative almost one-fifth of the world's uranium at the moment. There can be only two explanations for this. Either Cameco are extremely accident-prone and made a very big mistake for a mining company, or digging and drilling for uranium close to underground water sources, however we might call them, is inherently risky and no one, no government, no chief minister, no mining company can actually guarantee that the uranium and the water won't mix. Minister, which explanation did you consider was correct when you granted the exploration licence to Cameco? Well. I don't know what Cameco did in Canada, how stupid they were in Canada. Let me tell you something. Uh, sorry, Minister, are you saying that you didn't consider what Cameco did in Cameco when granting the exploration licence? Well, just let... Thank you. Well, I'm here what Cameco can do or will do in, in the Northern Territory. And I'm telling you something, can, for Cameco to operate in the Northern Territory, he has to satisfy us all they're going to operate safely and they're going to operate within the parameters we set, not the Canadian parameters or the American parameters or the European parameters. And I've said it before and I'll say it again, nobody gets a bloody license here unless they comply with what we say they have to do, how they do it safely for the environment and the community. And don't care if it's Cameco, if it's ERA, if it's Rio Tinto, if it's PHP. I will never put my signals in a piece of paper that will compromise the environment or the community of the Northern Territory. 